Welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to start a series of lectures about electron microscopy. Uh, to be more precise I will talk about scanning electron microscopes and uh, the basic principles behind each characterization technique. And uh, I decided to do this series of lectures because I work a lot with scanning electron microscopes and I do a lot of uh, characterization, a lot of investigation of uh, different samples. So I thought that it would be nice to share all this knowledge. And uh, throughout the lectures I will show you a lot of pictures, a lot of images about different materials, different uh, features in materials. I will show you some uh, structural investigations and uh, compositional investigations. So there will be a lot of mixed things. So yeah, I will talk about scanning electron microscopy. I will tell you later what does scanning mean, but uh, let's just memorize the initials. So this technique is often referred as SEM or SEM, however you pronounce it. And uh, there are other techniques like uh, transmission electron microscopy, which is more advanced and uh, more higher resolution technique but I don't work with uh, TEM right now so I cannot really talk about that and uh, firstly we can ask the question like uh, why do we need uh, SCM right because we have microscopes uh, most of you already met uh, light optical microscopes uh, let's just write uh, down like uh, we already have uh, light optical microscopes uh, let's call this LOM so why do we need light optical microscopes if we uh, or, or why do we need scanning electron microscopes if we already have light optical microscopes well the most obvious problem with light optical microscopes is the resolution so the resolution is a big problem so when we are using these microscopes we are usually working with uh, visible light so something between uh, let's say 300 or 400 to 700 uh, nanometer wavelengths and uh, this domain of wavelengths or this range of wavelengths basically restricts the resolution so we we can say that the LOM or light optical microscope has a limited resolution and uh, of course scanning electron microscopes also have limited resolutions uh, but uh, they have uh, better resolution as compared to LOM and uh, we can see that uh, if we use this uh, so-called Rayleigh formula just let me write it down uh, we can get the best resolution which can be reached uh, by an optical microscope within the visible range and that is roughly around uh, 200 uh, nanometers so anything smaller than that 
cannot be resolved or if there are two features next to each other uh, within a smaller distance than this uh, length we cannot distinguish those and then this basically goes back to the diffraction of the light so why do we care about the diffraction well firstly light is uh, usually treated either as a particle like a photon or a wave and then when we treat it as a wave we can think about the light optical microscopes uh, aperture as a one slit experimental setup so let me draw this down uh, quickly so uh, this is the slit or the aperture and we have uh, two light sources A and B and then uh, these waves go through the slit and then uh, we have the screen or whatever surface where we detect the uh, waves so what we want to do here is to investigate the wave nature of the light and uh, we want to be able to distinguish two points from each other so therefore we have A and B as the two points so we have this uh, arrangement and now there will be a diffraction pattern and uh, let me draw this again so I hope I succeeded I struggled a little bit but uh, this is the intensity of the two uh, lights here and you can see this is basically the the intensity for the diffracted uh, waves and then uh, basically we can see that this is the screen's uh, surface so this guy here this line but uh, what we want to see that uh, the two objects uh, so A and B uh, can be distinguished or resolved if the principal diffraction maximum so this point here let's say A is our reference so if the principal diffraction maximum uh, coincides uh, with the first minimum so basically the first minimum of the other or we can say that uh, the B prime maximum coincides with the minimum of this A prime so then we can distinguish the two objects but if they are any closer to each other to the, if the maximum is uh, towards this or the other way around the minimum is going in this direction then uh, we cannot distinguish the two objects because the overlap of the two diffractions will be uh, will make it impossible if you uh, let's simplify the things if you uh, watch these profiles from the top and you try to see the 2D projections you have these so-called airy disks which are like uh, basically concentric circles so you have some circle uh, it's hard to draw here but you have some circle which is the maximum here and then you have another circle which are the two minimums here and then you have another circle which are these minimums here and so on and so on and then if you start to like uh, draw these uh, maximum and the minimums for the B prime then they should be somewhat far away so in this sense it's something like this but uh, 
it would be nicer to plot this with actual values and it's easier to show it with some real graphics but the, I, I think you get the point so if these area disks overlap then uh, basically you cannot uh, distinguish these two maximums here because they like merge into each other and then they will show up as one single uh, peak and then you just cannot see it, see it so this is like the criteria to be able to distinguish the two particles so this kind of diffraction leads us to the Rayleigh formula now I just write down so basically this refers to the angular resolution uh, of a microscope you can look it up on the internet I just want to give you the basic uh, principles to you so this is what you have for the angular, angular resolution so basically you have the wavelengths and, and the diameter of the uh, aperture and then uh, if you want to translate uh, this to a distance so a sort of spatial resolution then uh, r equals this guy and then we use the numerical aperture it's usually written as NA of the condenser lens plus the numerical aperture of the objective and then uh, let's say we are using the possible lowest uh, wavelengths for the light which is 400 nanometers now just for the sake of uh, simplicity and then uh, we can just use some numbers from textbooks or whatever for the two objectives so basically these are the ideal or optimal values so this yields 203 nanometers so basically if the two objects the distance between the two objects is equal or larger than this uh, let's we can resolve them otherwise they will merge into each other uh, actually this drawing should be yeah no okay th this is fine so if the two objects are uh, within this distance or they are more far from each other then we can distinguish them easily but uh, other than that we cannot distinguish so they will uh, this kind of diffraction uh, airy disks or the these profiles will be too close to each other so they will overlap and we cannot distinguish those things and then we can already see that 200 nanometers if you think about your cell phone or if you think about your computer which has a CPU or the graphic card or the RAM or whatever the the width of the wire inside them in the CPU so this small distance is easily 10 nanometers and they can see it in microscopes with electron microscopes but you cannot resolve it with optical microscope so this is why you need it because uh, you already uh, you are already producing uh, structures which are smaller than this distance which can be resolved by uh, this optical method and also you have several things in the nature like different molecules and different uh, particles which are smaller than 200 nanometers so therefore you need some device which is capable of resolving this and that's how we go to the electron microscope so we can do something uh, similar calculation for the electron microscope we will not go into details but uh, I will explain it where and why but uh, now from the previous slides let's uh, replace photon beam so basically the light to electron beam so let's use uh, electrons and then you know that uh, 
if you use electrons, you want to calculate their uh, wavelengths, and that's a bit different. So that comes with this uh, De Broglie formula, which is basically that the wavelength is the Planck constant divided by the momentum of the particle. So. And this is the momentum. So the mo momentum of the electron is m times v, as we know. But uh, here, in the electron microscope, we accelerate the electrons in order to reach some speed some certain speed. So we apply some acceleration voltage on the electrons and they will reach some energy or speed. So basically we convert the potential energy into kinetic energy. So we can see that uh, now I just generally uh, generalizing and write like energy is basically Q, which is the electric charge times V, so, and then this will be the acceleration voltage, this is simply equals with the kinetic energy. So we can obtain the speed of the electron from this or the velocity which is basically the square root of 2 q v divided by m and then we can substitute this uh, to the momentum so what we get here is h divided by the square root of 2 m q v and then uh, if we take a typical uh, electron microscope, then the acceleration uh, scanning electron microscope, uh, we have to emphasize that. The typical acceleration voltage is uh, V equals, let's say, 15 kilo electron volts. Actually, you can go down to like one electron. Uh, one kilo electron volt or even lower. There are some special microscopes which allow much lower acceleration voltage. I will tell you later uh, why do you want to change it. And uh, they can reach 30 kilo electron volt easily. But uh, now we stick to the 15. So let's collect all the data what we need for our formula. So the mass of the electron is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 uh, kilograms and then uh, we have the charge and then of course already knows this coulombs and then uh, we have the Planck constant and then uh, I think nothing else is uh, needed kilogram square meter time divided by mass. So based on these details we just uh, plug and chug everything in this equation. So this is roughly 10 picometers or 0 0.01 nanometer. This is the wavelength. The wavelength of the electron. So we have this and uh, we can uh, just use the previous formula which is not uh, cannot be valid because uh, the numerical aperture and everything is different for the electron microscopes and we don't use it as we use it uh, for optical microscopy uh, we consider other details to uh, describe the resolution and everything but if we just say that, uh, okay, replace the wavelengths of the photon 
with the wavelengths of the electron, what is our uh, resolution. And then previously we had this. This is 0 0.95. And then uh, what we get here is basically uh, 5 picometers. So, but this is, uh, let's say, it's a non-physical quantity. Because this uh, equation is not really valid for uh, this type of calculations or microscopes or whatever, this, for this kind of system. But let's say that uh, we have some special photons which have 10 picometers wavelengths and we try to use them to resolve something, then we can uh, resolve 5 picometers. But uh, this is not so good here, so it's a non-physical. Also, we can uh, this this uh, number can be improved if if the acceleration voltage is uh, large, so like uh, several hundred uh, kilo electron volts, like in transmission electron microscopes or in uh, particle accelerators or or stuff like this, you have to consider the relativistic effects. So therefore, you get different numbers. So, and why? Because uh, the larger the acceleration voltage, the larger the speed, and then uh, the speed of the electron will be more and more closer to the speed of the light, and therefore you have to consider the uh, relativistic effects. But uh, here we don't really need it, because uh, this introduces very small error, like one percentage error as compared to the relativistic formula and we are just trying to understand what happens. So these are two things which have to be considered and also in electron microscopy uh, the optics of the microscope which are basically magnets, different magnets, uh, they play more important role in the final resolution and uh, the final resolution uh, resolution is somewhere between one to five nanometers for like a, let's say medium and or medium good uh, scanning electron microscope so this is like a commercially available microscope which is capable of resolving 1 to 5 nanometers depending on the acceleration voltage and other settings but uh, we will go through all of these and uh, I will show you my own measurements and I will show you some other examples where we can see how the how this resolution works uh, how we can see the pictures if we change some different uh, parameters of the scanning electron microscope and uh, what we can do with it because it's not only for taking pictures of some material but you can go deeper a little bit and uh, extract more information but uh, yeah once more uh, electrons have uh, low a uh, smaller wavelengths than photons and this makes it available or makes it no it makes it possible to uh, go down in size and we can investigate smaller specimens as compared to the optical microscopy and this is very important because it is used everywhere in life sciences so you want to check bacteria viruses even smaller things or different uh, proteins, molecules for pharmacy or also it's important when you try to do failure analysis in different metallic materials and uh, yeah 
electron microscope is, is very important in industry and also in research. And uh, I will show you both sides why it is important. But uh, for now, I think uh, these are the most important things that you have to know. And I think uh, this will be basically the first lecture or the introduction to the lecture. And uh, in the future, I will try to upload uh, more frequently. And uh, I think the next lecture will be about the structure of the electron microscope. So what are the main components? Uh, how do we use them? And what kind of information we can get from the different uh, detectors and different sensors or device in, in the electron microscope. So if you are interested in this, just uh, subscribe and uh, we will see each other soon in the next video. So see you next time.